Welcome to Film Feast. Where two sister grill masters watch a movie, yap about it, and then make a recipe inspired by it. Today, we're talking all about the classic Pretty Woman. One of my all-time faves. One of my all-time faves. I think we're gonna say that a lot with this series. We've seen this one both between the two of us. I'm gonna say 2,000 times. Yeah, and what an <laughs> unexpected plot for a Disney movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the plot. So this is the synopsis. Uh, Lady of the Night. That's putting it nicely. Eh? <laughs> yeah, that's what I that's what I want to leave it at. Okay. <laughs> Named Vivian meets a rich businessman, Edward, who hires her for the night. Edward decides to hire Vivian for a few days, and during this extended time together, the two begin to fall in love. What an interesting concoction. <laughs> <laughs> who would ever think that like that would make it such a classic? Oh, this movie didn't start off being a rom com, mm -hmm. believe it or not. It started off as a very dark movie. Um, I think when you involve hookers, that's to be expected. <laughs> what? I don't think we're allowed to say that. Yeah, well, hookers isn't a bad word. <laughs> it technically, in modern times, buddy, it's called sex worker. <laughs> Believe that you have that. <laughs> and we're demonetized. <laughs> I was inspired to make a dish that seems fairly obvious for the nature of the movie. All right, let's hear it. Pasta puttanesca. I don't know if if you're familiar with this dish, but it's I think a lot of people understand. It's very like it's a controversial dish because people came to realize that it's called pasta puttanesca because I think in Italian puttana means okay skank. <laughs> I'm allowed to say skank. Skank's not bad. I think bad. you could say skank. Okay, so that's what it means basically. It skank means, is an old tried and true. Yeah, it means lady of the night. So this pasta was created because apparently restaurant owners put together whatever they had. This is the tale. I don't know if this is true okay. or not. They put together whatever they had in a dish to feed ladies of the night in between clients at, with like scraps that they that they had. Aww, I and, didn't know that. And it's something that they could eat quickly. But apparently, so the other thing I read is apparently that that might be true, but it might also be a dish that, um, so uh, slang in Italian too is like, some people think that it might have come from like Italian saying like you're just gonna put a bunch of stuff in a pan and that's what this dish is. So it might not have anything to do with ladies of the night. That's what I thought, but the fact that like the restaurant owner wanted to feed them, I say, well, who wants to go with that one? Okay. I mean, let's cue. So I was inspired to make that dish based on this movie, but Vivian is not so much a skank. Mm -hmm. No, she's not at all. She's not at all a skank. For this recipe, I've got all the classic ingredients, the canned tomatoes, although this is double roasted because I used Ooh. fire roasted tomatoes and I'm making this on a charcoal grill. Traditionally in this recipe, there's anchovies, but because I don't eat anchovies, I use some vegan fish sauce. Ooh, there's such thing as vegan fish sauce? It's basically seaweed water. Weird. <laughs> Which sounds gross, but gives you that like fishy, salty bite. Yeah, but fish sauce does sound gross too, but yet it's like the secret ingredient in everything good. Yeah, and I, that's what I think makes this dish good. So I needed that like fishiness to like keep it really good. Okay, so did you go olives? I went some black olives. You could use black or- like Kalamata? Um, no, not, I did not say Kalamata. I said black. <laughs> you could use either, but what I went- What kind? Like what slice, kind of black? Just slice black olives. You're, you don't like canned. Yes, I do. I did not think that you liked canned black olives, buddy. I don't think those come in a jar. You're what thinking kind of like olives? the sun-dried ones. Yes. It's a straight Ooh, up pizza, pizza black olives. Okay, nice. So I like making this dish on a charcoal grill because believe it or not, you might not think like the cast iron, you're gonna get a lot of that smoky flavor into it, but you do. So while the dish is cooking, it's just simmering away, it's wafting. The smoke is wafting all over the top, making it taste phenomenal. Yeah, people don't think anything that's made in a charcoal grill is gonna get that charcoal flavor and therefore it is going to taste better. Okay, so while my sauce is bubbling away, takes about 35 minutes on the grill, that's let me bad. let me hit you with some fa interesting facts about this movie. I got lots coming your way. I got. Let's I, see if we, it lines up. You might have some crossover. Okay. Okay. So I just watched this movie recently. I've seen it. Like I could probably tell you every single part of the movie. I don't know why I watched it because I've seen it so many times. But this I didn't know. Vivian was almost not played by Julia Roberts. Knew it. Who was she played by? Almost. Um, I got this written down too. Imagine Pretty Woman with Demi Moore. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought Meg Imagine Ryan. Imagine Pretty Woman with Marissa Tomei. Yep. Imagine Pretty Woman with Laura Dern. Yeah. No, no. No. I love all those three, but absolutely not. So apparently Julia Roberts tried out twice for this movie. They initially did not want her, 
but ultimately I cannot picture the movie without her. I don't think anyone can. This no. movie made her. This movie put Julia Roberts on the map. And Richard Gere, same thing. Almost cast by Al Pacino and John Travolta. I got that too! I like, was like, Al Pacino? No, absolutely not. Not 1% true. John Travolta, back Maybe. then he was still he was still banging, still hot. He still is. Oh, back <laughs> then. <laughs> he still was banging back then, but I literally cannot picture it. The two of those two together, Richard Gere and Julia Roberts, instant chemistry. I don't, it's one of those things that the casting director, I feel like they can just like, you put people together, you hope for the best, you don't know what's gonna happen. That one was instant magic. Although I didn't appreciate the age gap. Neither did so I, in but real that's life, Hollywood he's, for you, baby. In real life, he's like 44 and she's 24. Oh, my, no. 20 years, he's like fully gray and she's like a child. However, though, for their roles, rich businessman, lady of the night, I'm gonna go with that term still, that does make sense. Okay, but because in real life, she's so much younger than him, they're at different points in their life as human beings. Mm -hmm. So she liked to party a lot, apparently. As like in real life? Yeah. Oh. So during the making of the movie, she was partying a lot, having a lot of fun after hours, and then in the morning, they'd have to shoot all these scenes. So you know the famous necklace scene? Mm -hmm. That was improv So the director was like, Julia's falling asleep, she's hung over, she's been out all night, do something to perk her up. So Richard Gere was like, I'm gonna snap the necklace box on her hand, which by the way, that was a real necklace. There was an armed was guard. There was an armed guard from the jewelry store on the set, waiting so they could get that necklace back and take it back to the store. Oh they couldn't afford to buy gracious. it. It was a sp fairly small budget movie. So he snaps the necklace box on her hand, and that is her real authentic laugh. And apparently, it was also very hard to make Julia Roberts authentically laugh. How? That's like she. Her laugh is like legendary. Okay, her laugh is her legendary. Real laugh. But apparently, she had trouble fake laughing. So every time she was supposed to laugh Did in the movie- Did you know I actually heard actors find it trouble, find it more difficult to fake laugh than cry? I believe that. I know, is that like, not- <laughs> Like, yeah. how, how does that- you But know, crying, stuff? you would think those would be on the same level, but apparently laughing is harder. Yeah, so the scene where she's laying on the ground watching I Love Lucy, when she first is up in his penthouse suite, the director had to tickle her feet to get her to laugh. And she's like laughing so much in that scene. And it's like, you're like, why would she be laughing that hard from watching I Love Lucy? But people grew to love her laugh because it's real. That's her real laugh. Cool. And same with the, the with the necklace scene. I knew the necklace scene was um, fake and they actually weren't gonna hold that back for outtakes. And then they put it in the movie because it was such a real, authentic, funny, cute moment between the two of them. I've watched, I've gone back and rewound that part mm -hmm. so many times. I love Richard Gere's reaction mm -hmm. too. Cause you knew, he knew he was gonna <laughs> do that. So he was like, here it comes. And he's so uptight, but you can see that he even is like, yeah. oh, like laughing because she laughed so hard. You also know that the movie was initially titled $3,000. I knew that. Did you know yeah. that? Did you know that? And they thought that? it was too sci-fi. <laughs> so they were like, why are we naming it that? And apparently the guy, the original writer, because this apparently had like a million writers on the movie. Apparently the original writer named it 3,000 because his dad told him that movies with the number three in the title were lucky. Oh cool, I didn't know that. I was trying to think of like, what is a movie that has like the number, th other than the movie 300. Yeah, I don't know. How, like, how is that lucky? Like, it seems weird and like, thank goodness they didn't go with that. No, I thought it was named that because that's what, how much money he offered her. It was, yeah, that's, that's, that was the point oh, of oh, it. Oh, that is also, why, okay. Yeah, that's also the point of it, but it was because the number three is supposedly lucky. Very interesting. I know, interesting tidbits of info for this movie. Okay, so and then the last FYI I have, um, Buddy, actually, no, I have, I have two. I have, ones, I have two left. The last FYI, so the, another famous scene when Julia Roberts is in the bathtub singing that Prince song with the headphones on. <clears throat> Pardon me. She needed, they needed to create so much bubbles so that her naked body wasn't seen underneath there that they put detergent in the water. And when she goes under and comes back up, the detergent got in her hair and stripped out her hair color. <gasps> so in between shooting ah. from one day to the next, the crew had to re-dye her hair because it all stripped and her hair became very brassy. Weird. Yep. Okay, that actually makes sense now because now that I'm thinking about it, later on in the movie, she does have more of like an orangey hue to it. So that makes sense. I just thought I was imagining it or like no. the lighting or something. No. 
Buddy, good info. Okay, last tip, last tidbit, and then I would really interested to hear what you made for this. Okay, and I have some still. Okay, <laughs> okay, I'm interested. You took a lot of mine. Well, but... I love this movie so much. So the last tidbit is Richard Gere actually broke a tooth when he was fighting George Costanza, <gasps> which I can't refer to him as his name in the movie, which is Stucky, but to me, he will always be George. Allah, Stucky, Allah. <laughs> A million that stick yeah. with me. Okay, but can I just say <laughs> that I know like George Costanza hates being typecast, but I can't think of him as a bad guy. But did you know that he was in this before he was in Seinfeld? Yes. This movie led to him getting Seinfeld. It's so weird because this role is so unlike George Costanza. Mm -hmm. But I, I did He's not. He's like such a disgusting idiot pig loser. in this movie. I yeah. know. But so when they were fighting and Richard Gere pushed him off, he broke a tooth. And I went back and look, if you look back, you can see Richard Gere going like this. With his tongue to figure out where, because he could feel it, it broke a, a crown in his mouth. Oh my, I gotta go back. Yep. I gotta watch it again. Yep, sucky. <laughs> what did the Putinesca taste like? Okay. And what kind of pasta did you use? I love that you asked that. So traditionally this dish is served with spaghettini or spaghetti. Ooh. I didn't have that, nor did I want to use it. That's You're not, not my favorite. You're not a long pasta gal. I like it sometimes, but it's not my favorite. Okay, but what do you always say about long pasta while you don't like it? I don't know. How do you not know your own your own thing that what you say about it? Why? I love long. You always say that long, you like get like three um forkfuls, spoon it up, and it's done. <laughs> so that's why you don't like it. It's true. It's tr and I do I think that does oh make sense. That's why you said that you don't like it. It's true. If you look at the actual serving size, you yeah. can end up eating like a box like and it's eight like strands. Thank you. I forgot that I feel yeah, that way. <laughs> I don't make the proper serving no. size. I go a little bit heavier with yeah. when I do a long. So I made an edamame pasta because Ooh. and then I served it with some lentil quinoa meatballs meatballs mm. that I made. Very high protein, very light dish. This is a perfect dish for summertime in my opinion. Did you make the balls on the grill? I didn't make the balls on the grill, nor did I show it in this video. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> I can show you later if you want. I Maybe do I, want to okay. see it. The dish itself I, I think is perfect for summer when tomatoes are in season. Throw some parsley mm -hmm. in there, some basil. It's fresh. If you got that like salty. Ooh, parsley and basil? I didn't for this because I didn't have basil, but I put parsley in it. But it's got that like nice briny bite from the capers. So I put capers in it as well. Love this dish. Real winner. I don't know if that makes me a skank for liking it, but that's the dish I chose to make. Skank or otherwise, I think this sounds absolutely spectacular. And I don't think that's an obvious choice. You really? Had to eat, that's a, a shocking choice to me, but your logic now makes sense. But what a creative choice. Well, because I was like, skank, Jesus, yeah, okay. what do I make? <laughs> Why do we keep saying skank a thousand times? <laughs> My recipe that I was inspired to make from this movie, it is inspired from this line. We're in that fancy sports car that she goes, this thing corners like it's on rails. And she, and does, and she doesn't know how to drive it. Or she knows she does know how to drive she it. She does, he doesn't. Yeah, that apparently she at the time didn't have her license and they let her drive that car and she was zooming all around. I really can't picture quickly. Julia Roberts like a wild child. I know. She doesn't seem wild to but me. But she was. That's so cool. Well, That's she was like 20, very young and in Hollywood. Okay, so they're in the car. She says, yeah, the, this thing corners like it's on rails. Edward goes, <laughs> what's your name? And she goes, what do you want it to be? Then he goes, he just gives her a look and she's like, it's Vivian, it's Vivian. She didn't lie at the beginning. So I feel like that's like a, a little entry into her starting to get into, not not intimate with him, but like starting their relationship. It wasn't like a typical client where she, she was like, it's been Amanda. Like Pamela. Yeah. Or like something like that. She she told her him his her real name. So the recipe that was I was inspired to make by this movie is Quiche Vivian. Instead of Quiche Lorraine. Instead of Quiche Lorraine. <laughs> Who is Lorraine? I don't know. And why is it Quiche Lorraine? Yeah, exactly. Did Lorraine invent it? And I feel like it's a weird thing to be like quiche and then something. She yeah. would be like spinach and bacon quiche. Like quiche Lorraine, I was like weird, but. I'm gonna need some background. Where did quiche Lorraine come from? I don't know. Did a woman in a kitchen somewhere named Lorraine create it? I don't know, but Lorraine's <laughs> not one you hear all the time. Sorry if you're Lorraine. <laughs> Or your mom is Lorraine. <laughs> I like it. Or your I, sister is Lorraine. <laughs> it's just not something you hear all the time. I feel like it would make a good pet name. Yeah, not a human name. Yeah, maybe not a human name anymore. But <laughs> so I made Quiche Vivian okay. because there is that famous famous breakfast scene where she wakes up 
Her hair is all disheveled. It's her real hair. She ain't rocking that like white, blonde, hideous, like fake looking wig. I she love that part. She emerges from, from the bedroom looking absolutely adorable. She's such a fresh faced, sweet gal. She doesn't really have makeup on anymore. He's like, I didn't know what you like, so I took the liberty of ordering everything off the menu for See, you. See, that's why I think people love this movie so much, because deep down, every woman wants someone like Edward. That's yes, like, that would just take, take care charge. of me and just like buy me things. And mm -hmm. like, I think that's why this movie got so popular, because like, I think things have changed now, but I think at the, it was very telling of the time. A lot of women were like, I would love a man to like do all this stuff for me. I think so. I think you nailed it. That's what I think. Okay, that's but what he didn't get her or what was not on that menu at that particular hotel was quiche. Now, I thought I, I saw eggs. There were eggs, buddy. I've buddy. examined the breakfast. So have I, because any food scene we are obsessed with. We pause, we analyze it, we see what's happening. The pancakes, the croissants, the and fruits. Then she picks up the pancake and like eats it just like, cause it just shows that she's not like a fancy gal. She just picks stuff up and she eats a pancake, she eats the croissant, she goes for like bare things. She's not a fancy gal. Although in that scene, somebody has pointed out that there is inconsistencies. One minute she's eating a croissant, then the next scene over she's eating a pancake. Oh, I thought she picks up the pancake. It, it looks like it could pass. I've rewatched it. It looks like it could, tra it, to me, I'm like, what if she finished the croissant? And yeah, that's what I thought. But it's like within seconds. Oh, okay. And she's so like then... elbows deep in a croissant and the next minute it's like halfway through a pancake. <laughs> Okay, well, that's why I made this dish. What's in it? There wasn't quiche on that menu, which I found surprising. Yeah. Because quiche had its heyday in like the-, the quiche, quiche was like its thing during exactly. that time. Exactly. So I'm surprised that quiche wasn't on it. And especially at this fancy hotel, you're telling me quiche wouldn't be on that menu? I don't feel like that's accurate. No, I don't either. I feel like quiche would be on that menu. And if it isn't, it should be on that menu today. So what did you put in the quiche? Okay, so for this recipe, I went with a store-bought pie crust. We always we we make pie crust, but I was like, you know what? I don't want to waste time here. Store but store bought pie crusts are phenomenal. I can't like, barely tell the difference. I can't if either, I'm being honest. Except you know what the difference is? I'm that much quicker to eat in quiche. I'm that much more annoyed if I make it myself. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So I went with not fancy ingredients because Vivian ain't a fancy gal. So I went with cheddar cheese. That's not, that's just like a regular typical cheese. It's not like a Gruyere or something like fancy. Although you could have gone a Gruyere, Richard Gruyere. <laughs> that is phenomenal, buddy. Oh my goodness gracious. Are you kidding me? Instantly, I'm like, Damn this it. isn't good anymore. <laughs> okay, well that is phenomenal, but I did go with the cheddar. Just a, a, a typical cheddar. Typical bacon, not any fancy bacon, just a regular type of bacon. But I did add this because I feel like Vivian is a little bit of a spicy gal. She's got a little bit of an attitude on her. That red hair. A little bit spicy, yeah, the red hair. I did add a hot pepper to this. Ooh. Seeds and all. Kid DeLuca would have been proud. She would have, <laughs> she totally would have. Oh no, it would have been good. What? A blue banana sundae. I just remember because they always hang out at the blue banana. What is wrong with us? Damn. Now that this has already happened, I can think of like 8,000 things that I want to make. You know that part where Kit's eating all like the accoutrements for the drinks? The maraschino cherries. Yeah, that, like that lemons, really got me wanting all that stuff. Yes. <gasps> yeah, buddy, that's like kind of inspired by yours. Yeah, kind of with the olives. You can literally find recipe inspiration in any movie. Yes. That's why I'm obsessed with this series right now. Me too. Okay, so that's what I made for mine. I made it on a charcoal grill as well because I wanted the flavors of the charcoal to lightly permeate the um, the quiche. So I made it on the big green egg, which is the perfect size for a little um, a little pie. So Ooh, the mini max, nice. my mini max. Yeah, it was perfect size for that. Let's talk a little bit about the outfits of Pretty Woman. Which what do you think is the most iconic look if you had to pick? The dress with the cutout sides. Okay, so her. Um, Lady of the Night dress. Me, that's to me is like, who could pull that off? Yeah, who I agree. Who has the body to pull that yeah, off? I agree. I was going to say the red dress, the red dress and the white oh, sleeves. Okay, yeah. However, though, apparently, you know what they say is like the most iconic and most replicated look to this day? What? The brown and white polka dot dress. You know that Ooh, one that oh. she wore at that um that outdoor like sporting event? Yeah. That dress, apparently, and the, the costume designer looked everywhere to get fabric that matched her hair. And so she went to this like exclusive place in New York and was like, can you just show me something that's like in the back? Cause she was like, I'm not seeing anything that's like really like calling out to me. 
and the guy had like a small amount of that fabric, enough to make one dress, which apparently in movies, you gotta make like multiples of the dresses. They made one dress and there was enough fabric left over to wrap around the hat that she's wearing. Cool. I know, I know. There's so many iconic looks in this, in this movie. Did you know that that red and black trimmed coat that she's wearing when she's at the bus stop yep. when Richard Gere picks her back up? when he decides like, no, I need her to come upstairs. Mm -hmm. That coat, the um, I think it was like the crew or the producers were driving around and they saw someone wearing this coat and they were like, we have to have this coat. It's perfect for this movie. Gave him a handful of cash. That's how that coat got into the movie. Can you imagine if like that was your, like a couple months later, this movie comes out and you're like, is that my <laughs> coat? <laughs> that would be so crazy. And the dress, the, the dress that I said is the most iconic look was two dresses that Julia Roberts found at a thrift store and made into one. Cool. Yeah, the bottom was black initially and she switched them out and made that. And then the designer obviously like had their, made some alterations to it but that's how that dress came about. Okay, so in terms of side characters, who was your favorite side character? Probably the hotel manager. <gasps> Did you look at this? No! Buddy, that's mine! Really? Yes! He's so tender. He is so tender. Who would have ever thought that guy's voice his vibe, his like, the fact that he like, kind of like took Julia Roberts under his wing and like did not make her feel He wasn't gross. judgmental. He no. wasn't like, oh, who are you bringing upstairs? Like, I'm gonna be rude to her. It's like he played that character so well. You could instantly tell that he was being so nice to her. And I cannot believe that you picked that yeah. though, but I thought you were gonna say Stucky. I, I, okay, Stucky, I, I no, I don't like him. Gonna say Stucky. I love I know, Costanza, I know, I don't like him at all. I was gonna pick um, Kid DeLuca, I think was perfectly cast as well. Absolutely perfectly cast. What is your favorite line from the movie if you had to pick? Oh, there's like so many. That I, for some reason, me and you really clung to it, stick with us to this day yeah, that we like, still use. Yeah, like, own it, work it, own Oh, yeah, it, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Take care of you. Yeah, that, oh my goodness. I, we say who, we say where, we say who. We say how much. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I don't know. It's hard, it's so hard to choose. Okay, but I think one of the typical ones that people love is, what's your dream? Yeah, okay. What's that's, your dream? That's a good one. And that one's at the front and the end of the movie. I thought that had such a like mystical, cool vibe to it. Okay, so my recipe tasted absolutely delectable. Okay, it what didn't take long. I would say this is a perfect weeknight meal. There was tons of bacon in there, tons of cheese. Oh, there was also, I also forgot to mention a red onion for um, Vivian's red hair. Ooh. That's why I did it. There's a lot of meaning to this quiche. A lot Very of meaning, meaningful quiche. Very deep, meaningful quiche. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't had quiche, give it a try. For some reason, the pie crust with the egg custard mixture, it might not sound like you might like it because it sounds a little bit weird, but it is so delectable. How is it weird? I don't see how it's weird. Some people, we lose them at the pie crust. I know, I made it for my father-in-law once and he was like, eggs in crust? <laughs> <laughs> how is that not what? gonna how is that not gonna hit? And I'm like, this is the food of your time. How are you not like this? Okay. What food would you make that's inspired by Pretty Woman? And let us know in the comments below what movie you think we should make a food inspired by next.